Uh, how long do I have to stay in this form? For life, Kim. As an insect boy, you can keep on living. As a human boy with failing lungs, you would die. There is no choice. B-Boy is one of the most depressing DC stories I've ever read. I was not ready for B-Boy. Not B-Man. B-Boy. Greetings comic lovers and welcome back to Casually Comics, the channel where we chat all things comics, from to comics new and old, to history, to anecdotes, truly wherever our whims take us. Today is a side tangent whim. I was deep in the throes of researching Lana Lang, Insect Queen. I was charting the evolution of her powers, hanging out in the Silver Age, seeing how everything worked, basically how her biogenetic ring transformed her into insects. This led me to Superboy 127. The story was released in 1966 entitled The Strange Insect Lives of Lana Lang, and it was written by Otto Binder, a man whose name comes up more and more in this channel. Something about his outlandish tales and his gravitating to them. The art in this is by George Papp. Now the cover for this does let you know that you're in for B-Boy, but it also tells you that the title of the story is The Seven Insect Lives of Lana Lang, and that's just a lie. It even has an introducing B-Boy title, launching B-Boy off in a long, promising... No, it didn't. The teaser page is just Lana turning into different insects, so I'll give you a brief rehab. In Superboy 124, also by Otto Binder, Lana Lang saves an alien who is trapped under a tree, and in his gratitude he gave her a special biogenetic ring. It let her transform into different insects at will. Not at the same time, one at a time. And she used it both to thwart crime and deal with things that were annoying her, like telepathically contacting her mom and getting her to read her homework out loud so that she could absorb her telepathically because she forgot it at home. Initially, she thought that she could only transform into each insect once, like that was it, one and done. And at the end of the issue, decided to hang up her superhero costume until she could think of more insects. Since then, in this issue 127, Lana has shown to have developed an interest in entomology and just a general overall fondness for the creatures. We also learned that Clark is against killing absolutely anything. Put these swallowtail butterflies in the chloroform jar so we can mount them as specimens later. Mm -hmm. It's against my code to kill a living creature, it's even an insect. It's summer break, and Lana is going on a trip to Africa with her father. Where in Africa? Yes, in generic stereotype land Africa, that's where. Now at this point in canon, she's told Clark that she's the insect queen and her dad. She reveals that this issue. She's very loose with letting people know that she's the insect queen. She loves to show off that she can turn into all these insects. It's kind of endearing how willing she is to just get full gross insect, but also she does not have any kind of secrecy about it. You'd think that you wouldn't want everybody to know. Lana takes the ring on this trip because they're going to meet a famous entomologist while they're away. When they do arrive, the tour guide they're supposed to have is out with a broken leg, but his son is available, a boy named Kim. Little did Kim know that he was doomed for having even set foot in the same room as Lana Lang. Now that they're there, Lana's dad, who is a professor, decides to spring the idea that he wants to look for a long lost pyramid on their guide. Just a little light exploration into the midst of the jungle, it's fine. On top of this, they're caught in a storm. So Lana reveals that she is the insect queen, so she can make them shelter. I'll fix that, Kim. I'll explain my bio ring later. It's changing me into some kind of gross silkworm. After the storm, a more serious problem arises. Lightning knocked down those big trees, forming a barricade we can't pass over. Another job for the insect queen. Yum, yum, tasty wood. The dedication and commitment to being the insect queen. Into it. Now, they do find this lost pyramid, but shockingly, the native tribe of generic Africa doesn't take kindly to strangers just coming and trying to abscond with their pyramid. And so the gang get attacked with spears. And Lana turns herself into this monstrosity, Cicada Girl. Just look at the embracing of it, though. It's kind of great. I kind of like Cicada Girl. Less great 1960s depictions of Africa. It's not the worst I've seen, but nor is it the best. I'll label it is period typical. It's not going out of its way to try to be offensive, but it might end up being that way for some people anyway. Miles will vary. Now somehow, despite Lana shielding them and Kim being fine in the panel where the spears are being thrown, now he's been hit and he's dying. And the only place that's close enough is the entomologist they were going to visit, Dr. Pelham. Or Pelham, I guess, based on that spelling. Apparently, he moonlights as a mad scientist and he's really obsessed with bees. The honeybee has amazing speed and flying ability. The secret of its flight dynamics could make airplanes perform miraculously. That was my goal, to obtain that insect secret. I'd hope to duplicate its flight maneuvers myself by taking this bee serum, but it may save that dying boy. This man was planning to turn himself into a giant bee to help airplanes? I don't believe any of this. This man just wants to be a bee. It worked. By altering his metabolism, the serum changed Kim into a human bee. Just like my bio ring changes me into insect form. But how can this help Kim? He had a punctured lung. This seems very excessive. Was there no one else or nothing else on the table except bee-human hybrid? He's alive and well. You forget, Professor Lang, that insects have no lungs. They inhale oxygen through the pores of their outer skin, and that's how Kim breathes now. Uh, I'm fine, but I, I'm a bee boy. How long do I have to stay in this form? For life, Kim. As an insect boy, you can keep on living. As a human boy with failing lungs, you would die. 
There is no choice. Spoken like a true mad scientist. This outlandish experiment that I just had lying around was your only option. You had to have eight hands. It was the only way. Kim, aka B-Boy, is extremely depressed by his transformation. He is not all mollified when Dr. Pelham tells him that he can fly. That is not a consolation prize for him. He just feels like a freak, a monstrosity. He feels like he should not be. He doesn't even want to be seen by other people, so he flees. This does not look like a job for Lana Lang, but she's gonna do it anyway. The problem is that Silver is Lana Lang, has the emotional intelligence of a brick. So she turns herself into a bee girl to cheer him up. Listen, Kim, I've been an insect girl many times, as you know, and it's a ball. Yes, for you, because you always change back to human form, but I'm stuck with this bee shape. For good, it's repulsive. I know that Kim's life is falling apart. But there's something amusing about how he's swatting this flower. Part two, the fate of B-Boy. Spoilers, it's not good. Lana decides that to cheer him up, she needs to show Kim that it could be pretty awesome to be a B-Boy. He could be useful. Why look, hark, lo, a drunk actor. Suddenly they come upon a film set and a famous actor with a drinking problem, and they decide to pretend to be his drink-induced hallucinations to get him to stop drinking. Truly the world is a better place. Thanks, B-Boy and B-Girl, or Spider-Girl, because he turned to a spider to do this. Aren't you proud for helping to straighten out that actor's life? Sure, his life is strained out, but not mine. Our act was like a plot for B-Boy in a B-movie, and I'm still a monster. Just call me Freakenstein. Why did I laugh at that point? <laughs> it's not even good. Now, Kim has every reason to not be taking this well. His life as he knew it is over. He now has to live life as some kind of human bee hybrid, and there has been no testing, nothing done on this. Maybe he can go back and help with those airplanes. But how is this going to work long term? Nobody knows. This is the first time this has been done. His whole life was ahead of him, and now it's behind him. I'm sorry, I can't help it. The story is just so hard to believe. Lana now does the worst thing that she could possibly think of. But, I mean, it's one of the worst things. I mean, not the worst, but she decides to lead him on. Oh, Kim, stop acting like you had a part in a soap opera. I want to be your friend. And this should prove it. <laughs> you kiss me. You'll never know how happy you made me, Lana. Let's have a picnic tomorrow. I'll furnish the food. Meet me in the jungle. Will do, B-boy. Friendship doesn't call for that much cheek kissing. It can, but you know that's not what it meant in this instance. This is the Silver Age. They're practically married. He really could have just used a friend to talk to. This threw it all out of whack. Now this transformation has messed with Kim's mind in more ways than one. In some ways, he started to think like a bee. We're not going full on fly remake or anything, so he's not gonna start dancing to communicate or anything like that. We're gonna get surface level behavior. So he's gonna start making lots of honey. We are spared the body horror of him making it. H honey? Yes, darling, Olana, when a girl calls a boy honey, it means she likes him a lot. Oh, Kim, honey, it could also mean that they're pitying or condescending to you. It's only been a day and he's forgotten that humans eat food. He's more bee now than men. He really is. Kim is humiliated and he flies off. He's very unstable and this added Lana romance is not helping his stability. In fact, it's become the one thing he's clinging to. Kim is then captured by some big game hunters. I know, this story has everything. Body horror, awkward romance, casual racism, puns, it's running the gamut. Lana summons Superboy to help free Kim, and Kim has got it bad. He assumes that because Lana tried to save him and got Superboy to save him, that she must really like him. Wee, it's great to fly again, and Lana must really like me and ask Superboy to help me. Wait, I'm picking up voices with my sense to be antenna. So that's B-Boy's story, but it's wonderful seeing you again, Superboy. It's time for Kim to learn the truth. Lana likes Superboy, likes, is obsessed with, into Superboy. Naturally, you want a human boyfriend, Lana. Not a refugee from a freak show like me. How could any girl go for a human monstrosity? Oh dear, he's playing that record again. But I'm sorry I hurt his feelings once more. Yeah, look at him complaining about not being able to fit into regular society anymore because he's some kind of bee monster. Ugh, it's so tiring. Also, you see, he said Mary. There was a ring in one of those honey pots. Kim decides now that his only life is as a bee. So he sets off to build himself a giant hive. Has anyone told his dad what's happened to him? Or is he just sitting there waiting for his son to come home? Oh, Lana, you could never like me as I like you. I can't date you. Dance with you. Joke! Dr. Pell will only save me for a life of misery. I'll be a hermit and shut him and goodbye, Lana dear, forever. Kim's not okay. And it's not over yet because this giant hive draws the attention of the locals because of course it does. They've come to destroy it because they feel that's the home of evil magic. I mean, they're not that far off. This was some very questionable science. Lana swoops in and their medicine man dusts her with some magic sprinkle dust and it somehow makes her believe that she truly is an insect queen. Has the medicine man's curse worked? Will the insect girl remain in the jungle for life? We'll drink nectar all day and happily fly wherever we want. You're so, so handsome, B-boy. And you're beautiful, butterfly girl. We're not freaks to each other. Oh, I'm so happy now. 
wait for it. It's about to get 10 times more awful. This was all a ruse. Elsewhere, B-Boy's antenna have picked up Lana's voice. Let B-Boy think I was spurning you for him. His last memory of me will be the hour of happiness he spent with Butterfly Girl. She, she only pitied me and pretended deeper feelings for me. There's only one thing left for me. Side note, I know the choke is meant to indicate emotional distress. You're not supposed to say it, but it amuses me greatly to do so. Anyway, what's wrong with Lana? What was this plan? She was gonna slip away anyway. How was he gonna be happy? She's still gone. That's just something else for me to be miserable about. Her logic is so flawed. I understand entirely why Clark doesn't tell her that he's Superboy. Not in this time period. What would she do with this knowledge? I don't even know. All of this is Kim's villain origin, or really his end, because when he can, Bender likes to slip things past the code. In this case, it's suicidal undertones, or just tones. Because Kim is here to sting Superboy and also take himself out in the process. Because then his stinger will come off and he'll die. That's the lot that they're working with. This is wrapped up in the silliest premise and it is one of the darkest stories. A tale about having one's humanity forcibly ripped away, being cruelly manipulated by all those around you, viewed as a monster by even those trying to help you. Now Superboy tricks him into stinging a movie prop. Remember that movie was filming in the forest, it mattered. And we see that all the seeds of Silver Age Superman are there in Silver Age Superboy, cause he just starts mocking and berating him. I flew over that sack, B-Boy, figuring you would mistake it for a rock. But listen, B-Boy, B for bonehead that is. Didn't you ever hear of an antidote? If I try to discover a serum that will turn you human again, will you promise not to do anything rash? It's a bargain, Superboy. I never thought of an antidote. It won't be easy to restore me and heal my lungs, but at least I have hope now. That hope is misplaced. Also, really, nobody thought to talk to him about maybe he could turn back? That's clearly what he wanted. <laughs> I can understand why he wouldn't assume that, though. Look at how transformed he is. This is Silver Age Superman, though. He doesn't have to keep his promises. And then they just leave him there, and he goes back to living in that hive, the same one that was attacked, with no resources or support, and it appears that nobody told his dad yet. Hooray! This haunted me. I had to know. Were there more appearances of B-Boy? What happened to him? Did he get cured? Were there any letters? I couldn't find any letters. I was so sad about that. They left Kim in such a dark place, clinging to the one hope that someday Superboy would return with a cure. He had not accepted what had happened to him and he was just not stable. So I scoured and what I discovered was, this was Kim's only appearance. They just dropped this. Even sometimes when they like to bring back random characters from the Silver Age later on as homages or in the background, dropped dropped so hard. What I did find mention of again was the Lost Pyramid. In the story, Superboy yeets it all the way over to Smallville, and that pays off in issue 143, but there's no mention of Kim or B-Boy, just the fact that they were on a trip to Africa. He's just confined to this bizarre, tragic one-off. This story went so hard and then just stopped. I was unprepared. I had to tell others about B-Boy, and through him I did discover B-Man, so there is that. If they were just gonna drop him that hard anyway, it might have been nice to show him being cured. Poor Kim, he did nothing except try to lead them through the jungle. It was Professor Lang who led them astray looking for this pyramid, and that's how he got speared. It was also Professor Lang who led him to his mad scientist friend. He should start a vendetta against the Langs. Yes, his life was saved by turning into a giant bee, but at the same time, how upset he was was also warranted. Unless you want to turn into a giant bee or you're prepared for it, that's a lot of a lot. I don't know, would you want a life as a giant bee-human hybrid? Could you see something awesome coming from that? If so, what? Does the story of Kim, B-Boy, haunt you as much as it haunts me? Probably not. <laughs> Are you just impressed by how many off-the-wall things Otto Binder can get into a story? Share your thoughts down below, and while you're down there, please do all YouTube things. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so that you never miss a vid. Thanks so much for taking some time out of your day to spend discussing comics with me. I always appreciate it, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye!